Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, and I would like to begin by thanking all of the parents and teachers that have joined today. It's a real privilege and honor to be here at Fort Bragg. The month of the military child, April, is to be celebrated. And it's a real privilege to be able to come here today and to highlight the important role that um, military children have, that we have on behalf of military children whose lives are often um, very transient, as you all know. And we need to pay a special tribute to they and their families and to ensure that they have the best opportunity for a great education. And so it's a privilege to be here today and spend a little time talking with these parents and educators and um, seeing this tremendous school here. Happy to take your questions. Well, Madam Secretary, if you can, tell us about your visit. Tell us about you know, conversations with parents and things that you learned. What are some of your key takeaways from today's visit? Well, first of all, this school is clearly an amazing school, doing a, a terrific job on behalf of the young children that it's serving. I had a, the privilege of reading a, a book to the kindergarten classroom and then visiting a number of the classrooms and seeing the project-based activities that are part of an integral part of this school, a 21st century learning school. And um, it's just a real privilege to hear from the parents some of these, the positives and the successes of this school and this environment being one of them, uh, an important one of them, and also some of the challenges that come with the transiency that is uh, a part of so many military families' realities. Can you talk maybe specifically about how you and the administration um, are going to make military children and their education a priority? Indeed. Well, I think there are a number of opportunities, first of all, to um, really support the uh, implementation of the DODEA curriculums that are transferable from base to base, school to school. I, I've heard from the parents and the educators alike how important that is um, when a child moves from school to school to be able to know that they can transition well. I've also heard a bit more about the, the challenge that uh, particularly students at this base experience when they go into high school and they go to a variety of area high schools that not necessarily all of them work for every child. And so looking at policies that would perhaps empower parents to be able to choose the right setting for their child. Uh, Senator Tim Scott has some legislation introduced in this regard. And we'll be looking very closely at, at supporting policies like that. Anything else? Well, I think I think first and foremost, it's the the transiency, the the moves, the frequent moves, and the um, the reality that young children have to make new friends so frequently. And um, I'm not sure that that's something a school building or any one educator can can help to solve, or parents for that matter. I think it really does take a community and. Uh, this, this community here is clearly very united in the goal of helping to ensure that each of their children have the fullest and best experience possible. Madam Secretary, the uh, state GOP has invited you here to come talk about choice. Uh, is that in the works? If they've invited me, I'm hoping that we'll be able to do it. I'm, I'm not part of the conversation with scheduling it, but that would be a, a wonderful opportunity. I would look forward to it. In terms of non-military schools, are, is there anything with the DODEA programs that you think can be incorporated in like the public school systems and other schools that, again, are non-military? Anything that you've learned here or seen here that you know from um, their practices that you think can be integrated with other school systems? Well, I think other school systems would do well to look at the um, DODEA curriculum that's now been implemented and to see what's working well. Um, since it's only been a couple of years since implementation, I think that while there is a short track record, there's certainly some history. And as each state uh, gets ready to submit to their ESSA, their Every Student Succeeds Act's plans, they, it, would be, it would be an interesting thing for them to take a look at how the DODEA system and the DODEA approach is working on some of the larger bases and some, with some of the larger schools. 
And um, today, in fact, is the first day that plans can be submitted. So the coming months, we will be looking at those, those plans and those programs. But I, I'm hopeful that there will be a conversation between state, the, those who are forming the plans at the state level, and then uh, those in, involved in the DODEA system to be able to ensure that the best practices are highlighted and made available to others that would like to implement them. That's all the time we have. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Thanks.